State your name and occupation. My name is Samuel Jun Lee, and I'm the owner and head instructor of Hwarong Martial Arts in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, when I was growing up, I watched a lot of TV. I watched a lot of um, action hero stuff, Ninja Turtles, classic, Power Rangers. And um, I would be inspired like most kids are to do those things. And then uh, when I play with my friends, you know, we'd, we'd actually go and uh, pretend we're doing like some sort of karate tournament or whatever. And then uh, we'd just jump around, kick around and do what we saw on TV. Uh, it never really occurred to me that taking lessons is a thing that I could do. I don't know why, I just never thought of it as a kid. Um, but when I got to middle school, my mom opened her store in DC and there was a Taekwondo school like one block over and uh, she always saw me kicking around, jumping around. And then she asked, Sam, do you want to actually take lessons? I'm like, of course I want to take lessons. I'm always, you know, doing it anyways, except I have no idea what I'm doing. After high school ended and got to college, uh, I always kind of still did martial arts. It was always just a part of me, but I, I didn't train formally at that time. But I needed some money as a college student, as all college students do. My best friend at the time, uh, his older sister was friends with a guy that was teaching at a studio and he told her we need some part-timers. So my friend and I took the job I was like, hey man, I've done martial arts. You've done martial arts. Let's, let's do it. So we drive down from Baltimore all the way down to Bethesda and we taught part-time as, as like assistant instructors. And we did that for about two years. Uh, from then, there was a studio right by my house, and uh, I used to train. I trained there like here and there uh, with my friends. But we we swing by to see if we could use the space, use the floor, and sometimes the owner there would say yes. Um, so we were there one time, and then the master asked me, "Hey, what are you up to these days?" So oh, I'm actually teaching, and he said, "You ever thought about teaching here?" I was like, "Okay, well maybe it's a lot closer than Bethesda." So uh, I was teaching at both schools at the same time for a while uh, and then I slowly just kind of went to the one closer by my house more and more and then from then on I went from part-time to full-time uh, to pretty much people weren't sure who the owner was at that time because I was there all the time, I did everything. But no matter how hard I worked or whatever I came up with, the school was never going to be my school and the system would never really be my system. Uh, so the next logical step was really to open up my own place. About the same time, my aunt uh, decided to fly in from Korea and move in with us. She came with $10,000. She gave me 8,000 to invest in the school and open up. I didn't take out any loans. I didn't take out, uh, I didn't get any support from, I tried the SBA thing, it was taking too long, didn't work out too well. I, I saved up some money. My aunt invested, I'm like, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's go. So we went ahead, paid that security deposit, down payment, uh, lease rent, going through the paperwork. Uh, <laughs> being an experienced in business just, just builds a, a bigger hole for yourself sometimes because uh, I didn't consult a lawyer, I didn't consult a banker, I didn't consult uh, anyone really. I just thought I could wing it, I did my own research. I studied a lot and maybe that's why it took me two whole seasons and, and then some time to actually make a business plan and and all that stuff. Uh, whew, that was my bad. But uh, my family was supportive by the way. They knew I didn't have the experience, um, but they knew it was something that I really wanted to do and it was something I had to do uh, for myself. And uh, they supported me 100%. And without them, my friends too, they all, they all believed in me more than I believed in myself. Majority of the time, even after I opened, a lot of tough times, but them believing that I could do it definitely convinced me that I could do it. At the time in college, I was, I was studying psychology and the, the point of that was well, I was bad at every other subject, so that was kind of a giveaway. And I was pretty good at psych in high school. Um, and the one thing that was kind of consistent, I would think, uh, is I'm always going to be dealing with people throughout my life. 
So I'm like, all right, this is a relevant subject. So I stuck with psychology. And I would think, yeah, I mean, I can help out people and all that good stuff. But the reality was, after I graduate college, go to grad school, get a master's, work under someone for a while. After a lot of money and a lot of time, I can help a few people who are in position to afford those kind of services, which is a very select amount. Uh, at the same time, I was teaching at the martial arts schools. And parents are telling me like, man, my kid memorized what you said. Even I don't remember what I say. By the end of the day, I forget. I'm just talking, but these kids memorize everything I said. So it's like, man, these people, these kids are really hanging on every word I say. You know, it's really influencing their lives. So wasn't that the point, you know, of, of doing the psych degree? It's like, yeah, I want to help people. I can help, I can wait many years and help a few people later, or I can pretty much influence a whole generation of students now. So that kind of, you know, pulled me into teaching more. And uh, with everything going on, what's the next step up? What do I really want to do with my life? Open the school. Uh, I think it was, I started planning around 2012. I think I started in the beginning of the year. Um, I remember from April, that whole time until the end of August was all just business planning. Um, I had a partner when I first started and he dropped out. I was by myself. Um, all I had pretty much was, was my family. So I, you know, from spring, summer, and then the beginning of fall, uh, September is when I actually opened in, in 2012 and, uh, and that was rough because I was pretty much by myself. Those are so, some lonely months. Not having my original business partner just between my brother and I, uh, we probably both have a mutual weakness in, in marketing. Uh, but one of the most intuitive ways that uh, made sense to me to market the school was through the tournament scene in competition. Uh, the way that competition is set up, uh, we the event we do is Olympic sparring. It's a continuous sparring uh, event. Tournaments can range between having two one-minute rounds, a minute 30, or two-minute rounds. It really depends on who's running it. At the national level, it'll always be two minutes for adults. Uh, the way to score is very simple. A clean kick to the body is one point. A spinning kick to the body is two points. A strong punch to the body is one point. Any contact uh, kick to the head is three. If it's a spinning technique to the head, it's four. Uh, we have kyongos, which are half point penalties for fouls. And we have ganjangs, which are full point penalties for something like a flagrant foul. Like most combat sports, Olympic sparring, well, at least to me, just like when, you, when I watch boxing or kickboxing, K1, MMA is very exciting to watch. Because uh, not only are, are two people really putting all the time and effort of their training against the other, uh, but it's done in, in a system where there's a clean winner, there's technique, there's a science behind it. And especially if you're involved in it or if you're in it and you understand what's going on, that you can see the strategy, uh, it's, you can really see the intelligence behind it or how one element can oust another one, whether it's power over speed or speed over technique or strategy over power. Uh, it's just really interesting to watch. Uh, tips for future entrepreneurs that I would give, and a lot of this comes from the mistakes I've made, but I'm going to be pretty brief with it. Uh, the first thing I would say is, is talk to somebody, uh, whether they're a specialist that, that you pay for, or if it's just someone you know. I recommend talking to somebody who's in the same or very similar field uh, because they can tell you what to what to expect financially uh, emotionally and kind of give you an insider's view of uh, what it, what's really going to happen the reality of things you know, i can i can talk to a specialist and they, they might just tell me something that you know they're selling me advice or something like that but someone who's experiencing it firsthand uh, they're gonna have a different perspective on on what's really going on so my first advice is to, when I say do your research, it's, it's a little bit more than just looking it up on Google, uh, really talking to someone in that position. The second advice I would give is uh, playing it 
I don't want to say playing it safe because business is always a risk. Uh, but one simple thing that I could have done that I didn't do was I didn't take out a loan. Uh, as simple and as basic as that seems, uh, I was kind of lucky with my, my starting capital. But for the most part, when you make your projections, you make your numbers, don't be too optimistic. I mean, it's good to be optimistic, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be realistic. And, uh, you know, it's, in the end, it's, it's just wishful thinking. Uh, the third thing that I would say is... And for a profession like mine, where I'm dealing with people, uh, I'm dealing with parents, kids, you know, people who want to get in shape or learn the arts, um, it's a people-oriented job. But my personality, I'm actually really shy, introverted, and to me, that was one of the biggest hindrances. Um, you know, going out there, marketing myself, when you learn. When you want to sign up in a martial arts school, you want to see who the instructor is. Um, but being shy, it kind of backfires a lot. So when I, when I talk about going out marketing myself, that was definitely probably one of the biggest challenges I had. Would I do it all over again knowing what I know now? Uh, I would do it all over again. I would probably do it a little bit differently. I would start a little bit smaller, build a student base, and then move to a larger location. I just went full speed ahead, pretty much blindly, uh, due to my own, I guess I won't say ignorance, uh, pretty much. I thought I knew what was going on, you know, it's like, ah, it's not, the, it's not quite the same teaching, running a class and running a business. They're two very different animals, pretty much. But I would do it again. Uh, I wouldn't, I can't really imagine myself doing something else uh, because it's something that I love to do. It's something that I'm good at. Uh, and I and I think it's it's meaningful. I, I've done other jobs on the side before, where it's just kind of busy work. Um, but in the end of the day, whether I quit or not, it didn't bother me because it didn't matter. Because to me, it didn't carry any meaning. Uh, there was no real purpose in in busy work. And uh, to me, I think if you can get paid for doing something that you love to do. And that you find meaningful, then then that's that's the move to make because uh, in the end, money doesn't make you rich. It's it's gonna be the people that you deal with and the lives that you affect. And uh, in the end, it's all about the time that you have. At the end of it all, our our lives need to have a purpose. And in society, to survive, we we need to make a living. Uh, it only makes sense to me that we need to put purpose in our work. Uh, people come to me for, for a lot of different reasons, whether it's, it's self-defense, uh, fitness, uh, maybe it's to pursue the sport or have a place to belong or just to accomplish something. They, they place a trust in me even though I may be someone that they've never met before. And uh, that to me is, is a privilege. And everyone's accomplishments uh, range in sizes. It could be something as small as breaking a board. It can be getting the next belt. It could be being the grand champion. It can be winning the Olympics. It could be losing two pounds. Uh, it could be a lot of things. It can just be the sense of being stronger or having confidence in yourself. And that joy that they get, that, that pride, that sense of liberation, that sense of purpose, those become my senses of joy and pride and liberation and that becomes my purpose. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of times when I've had my doubts and I wanted to quit, maybe close down the school or pursue something else, um, the belief of my students, their belief in me became my belief in me. and. To be honest, I, I wouldn't know how to live any other way. I want to give special thanks to my family, uh, my parents for supporting me this entire time, my brother, Coach Dan, for being there for me. Even, even now, he's still, he's still helping out. Um, my aunt, who recently passed away, the school wouldn't have been possible without her. Um, my friend Vaughn, who's in, who's in Cali right now, he actually donated a good amount. Uh, to help out with the school when we first opened. 
um, Coach Nate, Mr. Nathan Brown, my uh, number one, my right hand man, always being there for me and uh, representing the school at every every fight, every tournament we go out to. All the coaches, all my competitors, uh, my team. Uh, you guys definitely make me proud. You make the school proud. Uh, you put our name out there on the map, and all the parents and and the students who come out the school cannot stay afloat without you guys. So I thank you guys for your support. And we got a long way to go. We're going to keep moving forward. This is just the beginning. Uh, so thank you.